From the very early days of New Zealand colonization, Maori and Chinese lived side by side. In fact, both were on the fringe of society, suffering from economic and social deprivation, and the Chinese suffer from uh, legislative discrimination as well. So they bred a kind of affinity in ad adversity. Well, the intergroup dynamics that I particularly look at is the um, Maori as First Nation Tangata Vanua, and then the Chinese as a classic group of immigrants, the first group who came in sizable numbers, who looked visibly different. The public would be very much intrigued by the relationship between Maori and Chinese. And in fact, even members of the communities themselves would be intrigued because many did not know that there was such close relationship and intermarriage between the two groups. And we interviewed more than a hundred persons of who are of who are either Maori or Chinese or Chinese Maori or Pakeha who, who have very close interactions with them. This research on the interaction between Maori and Chinese conducted at the University of Auckland is one of the first pieces of research about the interaction between the First Nation, the Tangata Vanua, like the Maori, with the immigrant group, well, anywhere in the world. So I think that this, that is why after the publication of the books, it has aroused much international interest. It will inform the way forward for New Zealand biculturalism. Hopefully it can encompass multiculturalism as well. Many people feel that the two isms are in conflict, but in my view it isn't. Now because the way forward is for like the, the Maori and the Chinese could work together from very early times and then and until now there would, could be further understanding. Now and this is important for New Zealand's national identity that it includes Pakeha, Maori and the new Asians who are increasingly a very important minority and visible minority in New Zealand.